Hi, and welcome back to Dolphin Learning. Today I'll show you how to calculate the present value and future value of simple annuity due. I'll show you how the formula is derived, and we'll solve some questions using the formula method. So with that being said, let's get started. Okay, so here's a quick recap of annuity due from our types of annuity video. If you wanna learn more about the types of annuities, uh, there's a link in the description so you can check that out. With what an annuity due is, we can say that the annuity due is when the payments are made at the beginning of each payment period. So let's say you're investing $100 for the next six years and the payment period was from January 1st to December 31st. The payment would be due on January 1st of each year, right? So you'd make $100 investment for the next six years as shown in this example, but the payment would be due at the beginning of the period. Now, there are two types of annuity dues, right? There's a simple annuity due and a general annuity due. In a simple annuity due, which is the topic of this video, the interest compounding and the payment period, the frequency between the two are the same. So if the interest compounding frequency is yearly, payment period frequency is also yearly. If the payment frequency is monthly, interest compounding is monthly, right? So you get the idea. Now, in a general annuity due, the interest compounding and the payment period compound, payment period frequency are not the same. So if the interest compounding has a frequency of monthly, yearly, or semi-annually, this way it would not be the same as quarterly, right? This could be, if this is monthly, this is quarterly. If this is semi-annually, this is annually or monthly. So they're not the same, right? Now let's go ahead and get into how the formula is derived for the annuity due, right? So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so here we have a question that states that Jessica is investing $1,500 today in a savings account for three years at an interest rate of 5% compounded annually. What would be the total value of her investment at the end of three years? Now, we know that this is a nearly due question. What if I were to tell you that you can solve this question using the future value of compound interest formula, right? The reason why that is because this is a time value of money question. So let's go ahead and just quickly solve this question using the future value of time, a future value of compound interest. Before we do that, with any time value of money question, the first thing we have to do is draw out a timeline. So when we do that, we see that we have a timeline for three years with a payment or investment being made at the beginning of each payment period at $1,500, right? And our interest rate is at 5% compounded annually for the whole three years. Now that we have drawn out our timeline, let's go, go ahead and calculate the future value, right? Using the compound interest formula. So when we use this formula and calculate the future value of all these investments, we're gonna start in year three because that's what we're gonna calculate what the value is in year three. Now we don't have any investment here so we don't need to calculate a future value here, but we do have an investment here in year two. So that's gonna be our N1. And when we do that, when we calculate the N1, we get $1,500, which is our present value, multiplied by one plus 5% to the power of one, which gives us 1575. Now we go ahead and calculate for year one, which is gonna equal our N2, and we get 1653.75. And lastly, we calculate for year zero, which is gonna equal our N3. We get 1500 into one plus five percent to the power of three, which equals to $1,736.44. Now, if we add all this up, we get an answer of $4,965.19 approximately. So this in itself is the answer for this question. But now, this is very tedious, right? It's very long. If Jessica was investing it for the next 18 years, you know how long that would be of a calculation? And chances of making an error are very high. So what we can do 
is we can simplify this into one equation that helps us solve this answer or helps us get this answer. And what we see here are two things. We see a common term, right? And a common ratio. So what we can do is use the geometric series equation to generate a formula for annuity due. So let's go ahead and do that. So here's the geometric series equation where what, what I've laid out here but up here. Now we're just going to subtract we're going to do some algebraic calculations. I'm just going to subtract this equation by multiplying it by r and then subtracting it by this, right? So when we do that, we multiplied it by r and then we're going to subtract equation 2 from equation 1. And when we do that, we we see some common terms which is ar squared, ar cubed, ar to the power of 4 and so on and so forth. We can cross those out. So we're left with S sub n minus R, our common ratio, multiplied by S sub n is equal to our common term times ratio subtracted by common term times ratio to the power of n plus 1. Now we just go ahead and factor and simplify this equation so that we can solve for S sub n. Right? So when we factor and simplify, we're left with 1 minus R is equal to AR multiplied by 1 minus R to the power of N. Now, to solve for S sub N, we just divide both sides by 1 minus R. So when we do that, we get S sub N is equal to AR multiplied by 1 minus R to the power of N divided by 1 minus R. Now, you can alternatively take equation 2 and subtract it from equation 1, right? We can also do that, and I'm just going to do that. But before I do, I want to show you that you can use when you, you can mainly use this equation when your r is less than one, right? When your r is greater than one, you would have to use another equation. Practically, they'll give you the same answer, but the reason why we have to use the other equation, I'll just show you that because that equation is going to help us derive the formula for this question or for the annuity due question. So let's just go ahead and subtract equation two from equation one and see what we get. So we have the equation two where r multiplied by s sub n, right, is equal to a r squared plus a r cubed plus a r four all the way up until n plus one. Now we are subtracting s sub n from this, right? So when we do that, we're left with common terms are crossed out, and we're left with r multiplied by s sub n minus s sub n is equal to a r to the power of n plus one minus a r. If we factor and simplify, right, we have S sub n multiplied by R minus 1 is equal to A R multiplied by R to the power of n minus 1. I'm going to divide both sides by R minus 1 because we're solving for S sub n, and we're left with this equation. Now, this equation and this equation would practically give you the same answer, but we use this equation majority of the times because our r is greater than 1. Our r is greater than 1. In this case, it's 1.05, right? So now let's go ahead and use this equation to solve for this question. We should get this answer. So let's go ahead and, so go ahead and do that. Uh, so here's the same question. Uh, it states that Jessica invests $1,500 today in a savings account for three years at an interest rate of 5% compounded annually, what would be the total value of your investment, right? It's the same question. So the first thing we do is draw the timeline, right? Where we have year zero to year three, payment being made at the beginning of each payment period, 1500, 1500, 1500, interest rates 5% compounded annually. So let's go ahead and use our geometric series equation that we formulated to solve for this question. So when we do that, we know that our r is greater than 1 because it's 1 plus 5%, so it's 1.05. So we're going to use that equation, right? Now, before we do that, we're just going to lay out some variables. So our s sub n, what we're solving for is unknown, right? Our a is 1,500. Our common term is 1,500. Our ratio is 1 plus 5% or 1.05. And our n is 3 because it's 3 years. Now let's go ahead and plug these 
into this equation and see what we get. So A substituted at 1,500, 1 is 1, plus 5%, which is your R, right? Multiplied by R, which is 1 plus 5% to the power of 3 minus 1, divided by 1 plus 5% minus 1. Now, you can cross out minus 1 and plus 1, so you're left with just plus 5% or plus I, right? Now, you can simplify this, or we're left with 1,500 times 1 1.05, which gives us 1,575. And then we can simplify this using our calculator as well. So when we do that, we get 1,575 for 1,500 multiplied by 1 plus 5%. And 1 plus 5% to the power of 3 minus 1 gives us 0 0.157625. When we divide that by 5%, we get 3.1525, and then we multiply that by 1,500, we get $4,965.19. So now we know that the geometric series equation that we formulated using our equation can help us solve for the simple NUDD question. Now we're going to use this same equation but we're just going to rearrange it to use the time value of money variables so that it's more easier for us to understand. So when we do that, we get an equation like this one, where we've substituted S sub n for future value, right, of simple annuity due, A for a common term being your payment, and your R, which is your interest rate or ratio, which is 1 plus I in this case. Same thing here. Now there's only I left here because when we substitute our R into the equation, right, we're left with 1 plus I. Here in this case it's 5%, but it's 1 plus I minus 1. So minus 1 plus 1 is crossed out and you're just left with I, right? So that's why there's just I here. Now let's lay out the variables for this equation and then solve it. So F we, we don't know what it is. PMT, we know that it's 1,500. Interest rate, we know that it's 5%. And number of terms or number of years, we know that it's 3. Now, let's use this and plug it back into this equation. When we do this, we get 1,500 multiplied by 1 plus 5%. Multiply the whole thing by 1 plus 5% to the power of 3 minus 1 divided by 5%. Practically, this equation or this in a simplified form, more or so, right? We have just have we haven't just simplified it, but it's the same equation simplified. So when we multiply these two together, 1500 into 1 plus 5 percent, we're going to get 1575, and the top simplified here is going to give us 0 0.157625, and then we farther if we simplify farther. We get 3.1525, and then when we multiply that by 1575, we get $4,965.19. So there you go. You can use this equation to solve for any future value of simple annuity due. Now let's look at a present value question. Okay, so here Andy deposits 1100 at the beginning of each year in a savings account. For the next three years, the investment earns an interest of 3% compounded annually. What is the total value of his investment today? Here we have a time value of money question. More importantly, it's a simple annuity due question. And we're calculating the value of the investment worth today. So we're calculating the present value of the investment. Now, we can use the present value of compound interest equation to solve for this problem and we're going to do that as well just to show you how it works before we do anything let's draw the timeline and see what we get when we draw the timeline we get year zero to year three with an investment being made in year zero or the beginning in year beginning of each year which is today year one and year two beginning of each year of 1100 with an interest rate of three percent compounded annually now we're going to use the present value of compound interest to solve for Andy's investment or the value of Andy's investment, right? So when we do that in year one or in year zero, 
we get 1100 in year one and in year two respectively we get 1067 and 96 and in year two we get 1036 and 86 right when we add this we get a total value of three thousand two hundred and four dollars and eighty two cents this is the total value of andy's investment today right now again if this was going on for the next 10 years or 15 years it would be very hard for us to calculate that right chances of making our chances of making an error are very high so what we can do is generate a formula for present value of simple annuity as well but but we don't have to go through the geometric series this time because earlier we did calculate a future value of annuity due formula right so that that equation was f v is equal to or f v do is equal to payment into one plus i multiplied by one plus i to the power of n minus one divided by i right now all we have to do is take the f v do and substitute it into this equation because we know that this compound interest equation of a present value still gets us this answer so substituting this equation into this equation for f v it's going to give us the present value of simple annuity due. So when we do that, we get present value of simple annuity due is equal to PMT into 1 plus i multiplied by 1 plus i to the power of n minus 1 times 1 plus i to the power of negative n, right? Now we can just take this part of the compound interest equation from here and multiply it into this part of the equation from future value or future value due and see what we get right or simplify it so when we simplify we get one plus i to the power of negative n right is multiplied by negative one so we get one times one plus i to the power of negative n and we get one plus i to the power of n times one plus i to the power of negative n now if you know uh when we multiply these two together what, what we're practically doing is just dividing the positive n by negative n right so it's one plus i to the power of n divided by one plus i to the power of negative n and when we do that or, or one plus i to the power of n right and when we do that we just get one here right so we're going to get the equation that's going to equal pmt multiplied by one plus i and multiply that by one minus one plus i to the power of negative n divided by i now that we have this equation, we can use this equation to solve for this question, right? And when we substitute in the variables, let's see what we get. We get a payment for 1100, which is what Andy was depositing at the beginning of each year, which is 1100. The interest rate is one plus 3%, right? That's what it is annually. And the n in this case is negative three because it's a present value question. And it's three because it's for the next three years. Next three years. So when we do that, we simplify this even farther. We have all the information. The first part is we simplify these two. We get $1,133 multiplied by when we simplify the top part of the fraction, we get 0 0.084. 85834065 divide that by 3% and we get 2.82861135 multiply that by 1133 and we get the answer for present value of $3204.82 so there you go this question is solved this equation gives you the present value for simple annuity due and this equation gives you the present value for simple annuity due. Now that's it I had for this video. I do have some additional questions here that you can solve, right? Go ahead and look over these questions. If you do happen to solve this question and arrive at the solution, comment down below. I'll respond to your answers. And uh, other than that, that's all I have for this video. So if you really like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to my channel and check out the other videos that are found in this uh, channel. So thank you, bye.